Alexander, let's talk about gold. Mm-hmm. We had uh, gold made history the other day. It broke the uh, 2000 mark. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what's your opinion on what's going on with gold, Alexander? Obviously, a lot of this is tied up to uh, the lockdowns, to the state of the global economy, mm-hmm. to the performance of the dollar, to the U.S. economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you see things playing out here? Some people are saying it may even hit 3000 yeah, well, indeed. I, we'll, we'll see about that. People always come up with these project, predictions. And the one thing I've always found in my life is that you be people who invest, you know, bundle into gold in that way on, in the expectations that it will hit a particular price are very often disappointed. Now, I'm going to say something. I mean, obviously, we, we who follow the news, and I no doubt many of our viewers, will be familiar with many of the things that are being said about the state of the US, that you know it's basically running itself down, that its money system is out of control, and that we're on the brink of the collapse of the dollar. I take all of that with a gigantic pinch of salt. In fact, not just a pinch of salt. I mean, I don't believe it straightforwardly. I don't think the dollar is on the verge of crashing. I don't think we're on the verge of hyperinflation or, uh, um, you know, uh, uncontrolled stock market collapse or any of those things. But we are going through a time of great uncertainty. There's been the pandemic. There have been the lockdowns governments around the world, not just in the United States, but in many other countries, are having to spend vast amounts of money to uh, um, keep their economies ticking, or at least keeping their financial systems ticking. There's great uncertainties about what the future is going to hold. There is the prospect, or at least the possibility, not the prospect, the possibility of a Biden administration in the United States come the autumn and of a political crisis in the United States come the autumn. And the classic response when things are unsure is that people hedge by going into the safe haven, which is gold. And I think that is what we are seeing at the moment. I I tend to see this as a widespread and common response at a time of crisis. There's also big uncertainties in the international situation. Remember, there's also issues with the oil price, which has gone down. There's been uh, uh, you know, manu- military maneuvers in the South China Sea. It's all come together in a way that really benefits gold. And I think this is really all that we're seeing. I don't think we're seeing the imminent collapse of the dollar system or the imminent collapse of the financial system of the United States. I'm going to say something else. I think that the financial system that is in real difficulties and in imminent trouble is not the financial system of the United States. It is the financial system in the Eurozone, which is much more overextended. The banks in the Eurozone are in a far more difficult situation than the American banks are. We've got no proper uh, 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 treasury system in the in Europe. We've got no proper monetary policy in Europe. And um, so uh, that's if you if you're if you're looking for a crisis, look to Europe, not the United States. And if there is a crisis in Europe in the autumn, which I think is highly likely, then the dollar will strengthen rather than continue to decline as it is at the moment, especially if, as I personally still expect, Donald Trump is re-elected president of the United States. All right, Alexander. So everyone is talking about the U.S. and whether you're going to see a U recovery, an L, a V. I mean, you know, everyone is, is talking about what kind of uh, economic outlook you can expect from the U.S. We have two stories that came out today. One of them is saying that uh, Trump may use executive orders to uh, bypass the Democrats in Congress and get some uh, some of the stimulus that he wants out there. So he may just start governing via executive order to get some of the to start pouring more money and more uh, more aid, stimulus aid into the system. That's the first story. But the second interesting story that came out, and we'll find out Friday, I guess, is, and I'll read you from Zero Hedge, the title, Trump touts big job numbers expected Friday may suspend 
the payroll tax. He said this on uh, Fox and Friends in the morning that, uh, and I'll quote what he said, another big jobs number on Friday. Now, of course, a lot of people are also talking about the state of employment in the U.S. and uh, the fact that you have tens of millions of people without a job. And we all know the cascading effects that that entails, paying rent and collecting on the rent and, you know, uh, loans going bad and, and all kinds of things. What do you make of everything? I've right. uh, First of all, I would not be at all surprised if we see good job numbers in, on Friday. Can I remind our viewers that here at the Duran, we predicted to we, we predicted good job numbers before against everyone else against all the trends and we were proved right one of the great problems and i'm not in any way minimizing or underestimating the hardship many people in the united states are experiencing at this time which by the way hardship is also being experienced in other countries too in britain where i live there is there is terrible hardship being experienced by lots of people but one of the problems is that you get figures that are published by various agencies which quite clearly are serving particular political agendas to put it simply want to see a biden presidency and are intent on making things appear worse than they are so we got this extraordinary number that was published a few days ago about the united states having undertake under experienced the 35 percent contraction in fact that contraction in the united states is smaller significantly than the one in Europe. The fact is that the way in which the figures were put together and assembled made it look worse than it actually was. And it ignored the fact that the United States is actually experiencing a contraction at the moment, which is significantly smaller than Germany's, to give one example. So not only are we seeing, I think, a smaller real contraction than some of these figures that are suggesting. But I think that we are actually seeing a recovery in the economy as the various lockdowns that have happened around the United States have eased. And of course, there's been reimpositions of lockdowns in some places. But overall, I think we're looking at a story of American economic resilience in the face of this crisis. And of course, that resilience is going to strengthen because Donald Trump, having discovered that, again, with the Democrats in Congress, they're going to do everything they possibly can to make life difficult for him because their concern, their interest is not to help the economy of the United States or help the people of the United States, but to get Biden elected. He's going to do what perhaps... Um, well, what is the right thing for him to do in this situation, which is to start sending money into the economy through executive orders. And so he should. <laughs> that's what he's president for. So that's exactly what he will do. So I think we will start to see stronger economic numbers in the United States. I think by the end of this month, by the end of August, things will start to look visibly better for many people they will be experiencing a general uptick in their in their lives as the economy starts to gain pace and i you know i i i, I don't know i don't have a you know foresight in these things but i would not be surprised at all if we see good jobs numbers on friday all right great prediction final question alexander interesting prediction because you're going against the trends and Absolutely. I guess many I mean, analysts are saying we will see yeah. and we'll learn a lot on friday but final question, the differences between the EU and the US with regards to pumping money into the system. Once again, a lot is said about pumping trillions of dollars or euros into the system, i.e. the money printing. What are the differences between why the US can do it and achieve a rather quick uh, recovery in your mind and why the Europeans are going to just get stuck in a terrible, terrible economic hole. How, what are the differences there? Because you have both uh, both governments, for lack of a better word for the European Union, I'll call it a government. You have both systems, both governments pumping money into the uh, 
into the system? What, what are the differences there? Well, there's one, uh, one overwhelming difference. The United States is a nation and a state, and Europe is neither of those things. It is not a nation. And despite the attempts that are being made by some people, it is not it is not yet a state and cannot be a state because it is not a nation. So as it is not a nation, it doesn't have a government that has universal consent. And the result is that its entire economic and monetary system is a hodgepodge of different treaties, different agreements, different things hammered out, you know, by Merkel and all her cronies in various meetings and none of them none of them ultimately addresses the real problem because for the europeans the priority is not the european economy it's not the everyday lives of the people of the union it is to keep this thing this grotesque creation that they have the eurozone the currency the whole apparatus of the european union their priority is just to keep that going so they do whatever they feel they have to do to keep that system alive. But they're not ultimately concerned by what people in Naples or, or, or Brussels or Lyon or, or, or Stuttgart or, 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 or wherever are actually going through. The United States is still a nation, is a nation. It is a nation with a constitution, a real constitution and a real government and it's got a proper functioning uh, um, financial system that can be deployed to deal with these sort of problems it is darkness and light you simply cannot compare the two that's why i say if you really want to look at a crisis look at europe not at the united states all right. Any other comments? Yeah, I mean, Gold, the economy, anything else you want to say? Because once again, I stress there are a lot of theories yes, out there. Yes. A lot I mean, of I, a lot of theories. Now, I, and I, I, you know, I given a, I've given an optimistic spin about the United States. I mean, I want to now qualify that by saying that I do think that the United States has been living for a very long time in a, in a, in a way, long before Donald Trump, by the way. I mean, Donald Trump is not responsible for this at all. I, I, I accept many of the criticisms that have been made about the financial policies of the Federal Reserve Board. I think that they the, these endless QEs and infinite QEs, what they have done is they have demoralized large parts of the US economy and they have taken away uh, um, a lot of the vibrancy that was there and discouraged productive investment, which explains the overall fall in the US's increase in productivity. But these are long term problems in the short term, which is what we're looking at over the next few months. The underlying strengths of the US economy, which are very great, are still going to work their way through. The US is in a far stronger position to cope with this crisis than Europe is or any other uh, um, uh, or, or any other Western economy is. And people who talk about the fall of the dollar, they need to understand something else. There is no currency at the moment, alternative currency that can take its place. The Chinese RMB is not convertible. It's not freely convertible. So it can't be that. The euro, well, we've discussed how, you know, what a scissors and tape <laughs> spatchcock thing that is. It can't take the place of the dollar. Sterling, well, the problems in Britain are um, at least probably, you know, more, are, are greater definitely than in the United States. And it's far too small an economy. And gold just doesn't have that flexibility anymore to take its place in a modern economy. So whatever happens over the next few months, I fully predict that at the end of this year, the dollar will still be the world's reserve currency. In time, I accept that may be eroded, but one is looking at a process that will take years, not weeks, not months, and that discussion, in my opinion, is irrelevant to what is happening in the economy of the United States now. I will say one qualifier. It will speed up the demise of the dollar and the demise of the U.S. system will speed up if Biden is to Absolutely. win in November. Absolutely. And if Trump is to win, then 
yeah. there it will it will definitely slow down if not certain sectors certain sectors yeah. that have been hollowed out yes by the years of bad policy may actually revert yeah. to to the greatness they once were that's my uh, and I, I get to agree with that. And I'm going to add again a, a point which I made at the beginning of the program, which is I'm sure one of the reasons for the uh, uh, strength of, the, of gold is because the international investment community is not does not welcome the prospect of a Biden Biden in the presidency. I mean, they expect that if Biden becomes president, all financial discipline in the United States will go. Think about this. If the financial community, the investment community, was looking forward to a Biden presidency, the dollar would be strengthening, not weakening at this time, with Biden ahead in the polls. So the fact is they don't want to see Biden there at all, and they're pulling out of dollars at the moment and going into gold. And they're right because Biden does not have the, the strength of personality and does not have the program to, uh, uh, you know, continue to lead good policies for the United States, what you would see is all the various lobby groups that make up the Democratic Party all fighting to see monetary expansion continue unabated with spending out of control as every single uh, uh, program that they want is financed. And they've got this new monetary theory, modern monetary theory, which provides the ideological justification for it. So I think you're absolutely right about that. I think if you if uh, uh, Trump is re-elected, the United States has, still has ample time and space to turn things around. And I'm talking about the long term now. If Biden is re-elected, well, it's a completely different story. Yeah, good night. If Biden is elected, all right, Alexander Bear Curse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran, thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on that subscribe button. Like this video, share this video, drop us a comment down below. We love to read your comments. Also, please help us out. We are a small news channel and we are trying our best to report real news by sending us a couple of USD because we believe in the USD at this moment. Of course, if you want to send us a couple of bars of gold, <laughs> we'll take that as well. <laughs> you can do that by going to PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. You'll find links for those in the description box down below. And of course, you can purchase awesome magic mugs, t-shirts, v-necks, all kinds of apparel from the Duran shop. Unfortunately, yeah, at the Duran shop, we do not accept gold no. as a form of payment. But we do take every currency there is out there as a form of payment as well. Alexander. Indeed. And here we go. You can see the great things there. We've got all these amazing new mugs coming out. This is this is the United States that you and, and Australia. So the US there, Australia there. And we've got lots of other mugs with different flags on. If you can't find the flag of your own country, wait a little because Alex is adding mugs with flags on all the time. But if you're still, you know, still waiting and it's still not there, well, drop us a line and we will we will see about this. And just to remind our viewers, they are the best mugs in the world, without exception and qualification. I can say that as the world expert on the subject. And we now have mugs, by the way, in two sizes. You see, uh, there's there's our 15 ounce ones and our 11 ounce ones. This is the Greek flag, which you see there, and you can see what a beautiful mugs they are. Some of them now enameled also, and we've got a magnificent new range of shirts. You can see I'm wearing a new shirt, uh, and this one has the flag of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, the country which I am proud and happy to live in and also be a citizen of. And you will find lots of other shirts, all of them beautifully made, all of them 100% cotton. And you will find all sorts of other great things, hats, hoodies and stickers. And you will find our ever expanding library of ebooks. And as Alex correctly and rightly says, um, you can say, help us by coming to the shop. We're a small channel. We need your support. But also, of course, if you come to our shop, you will be the owner of these great things. So over to Alex and he will tell you how to get them. You'll find the link to the Durant shop underneath this video in the description box down below. Alexander McCurse, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.